morning. Welcome to part three of our discussion on the Dynon AP74 autopilot and its related components. I'm Ashley Pelk, and this video is brought to you by the Blue Skies Flying Services. Now that we have an overview of the systems that assist the autopilot, let's see what the cockpit really looks like. This is what the cockpit display looks like. This is the EFIS display on the pilot side. Above it is the HS34 HSI expansion module. In the center column, we have a Garmin 495, a Garmin SL30 Navcom, and a Garmin GTX 328 transponder. The right-hand panel has the EMS screen. And above the EMS screen is the AP74 Autopilot Interface module. The next thing we need to do is to turn the system on. I'll turn on the master switch, followed by the instrument, avionics, and autopilot switches. Then I'll select a display screen on the EFIS that will show us primary flight display or PFD information along with HSI data. Next, I'll load a route on the Garmin 495. I'll go from 3 Charlie Kilo to Farm Intersection and then to KJVL or Janesville, Wisconsin. Notice that all the data on the HSI is currently printed in the magenta color, indicating that we are in the GPS mode of navigation. If I were to press the NavSource switch two times on the HS34 module, I would switch the HSI data from GPS to VOR and the information would change to a green color. Let's go back to the GPS mode by pressing the nav source switch once to switch us from the nav mode back to the GPS mode, and we will see that the small magenta light above the letters GPS is illuminated, like this. Here we can see that the plane's current track, or TRK, is 073 degrees, and that the desired track to the farm intersection is 350 degrees. Since I am still on the ground and not receiving any valid VOR signals, we will not see any bearing pointers on the HSI compass. The distance to the waypoint is 8.08 .08 nautical miles. We are in the in-route portion of the flight, and the CDI has a scale of plus or minus 5 nautical miles. I will set the runway heading of 080 by turning the heading knob on the HS34 module to 080. As I turn the heading knob, a window will open up on the PFD display showing me where the heading bug is currently located. As I turn the knob, you can see that I am changing the location of the heading bug until it rests on 080. When I stop turning the knob, the window will vanish and the yellow heading bug will be positioned on 080. If my desired heading is beyond the visible range displayed on the heading indicator, the heading bug will remain parked at either end of the heading indicator until it comes into view. Then I will pre-arm the heading mode of the autopilot by pressing the heading switch on the AP-74 module like this. See the lights illuminated? I will use the heading mode of the autopilot shortly after takeoff until I'm ready to follow the route to the farm intersection. Now following our simulated departure from Lake in the Hills, we see that the GPS course to the farm intersection is behind us. 
We could use the heading mode of the autopilot to turn the airplane to intercept the desired course to farm, or we could use the nav mode. If I engage the autopilot in the nav mode, the plane will turn to intercept the desired course with a 45 degree intercept angle. Then it would track the course automatically. See the magenta lights illuminated in the nav and AP switches? Now that we have captured the course in the nav mode, it is currently tracking to farm intersection. While in flight, and prior to engaging the autopilot in the heading, or HDG mode, I feel that it is important to first sync the heading bug to my current heading. To do this, I simply press the heading knob on the HS-34 module. Otherwise, when I engage the autopilot in the heading mode, the airplane will immediately turn towards the heading bug wherever it is currently located, and this may be a direction you do not wish to turn to. Notice the magenta lights are illuminated in the heading switch, and then press the autopilot switch. The autopilot will be engaged in the heading mode. You will feel pressure if you attempt to move the stick to the left or the right. Provided you did not pre-arm the altitude mode, you will still have full stick pitch authority. Capture an altitude or can be used to pre-select a desired altitude. To capture an altitude, engage the autopilot in either heading, nav, or track mode. Then press the ALT switch on the AP-74 module. It will sync the altitude bug to the current altitude and the autopilot will now hold that altitude. If you were in a descent or climb when you press the ALT switch, the autopilot will recover to and maintain the altitude you are at when you press the switch. After engaging the autopilot in the ALT capture mode, you can now command the autopilot to climb or descend to a desired altitude. Just press the value knob until you see the altitude window displayed on the EFIS or EMS screen. Then turn the knob in the appropriate direction until your desired altitude is set in the window. Let's say 3,500 feet. Then the autopilot will climb or descend at your predetermined rate until it captures the target altitude you set, at which point it will level off and maintain that target altitude. You can also preset a desired altitude with the autopilot off. Press the ALT switch to preselect the altitude mode. Then set a desired altitude with the value switch. When the autopilot is engaged, it will climb or descend to your pre-selected value. If you would like to see more of our review of the Dynon AP-74 autopilot system, please review part 4 of this series.